Okay, so good morning everyone. Now we're going to discuss week number three. So week number three is chemical bonding. Okay, so here are the objectives for today's discussion. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to demonstrate understanding on the following. First, uh, we're going to determine if a molecule is a polar or nonpolar given its structure. Second, uh, relate the polarity of the molecule on its property. And lastly, you're going to recognize and differentiate the type of compounds. Okay, so first, uh, let's unlock some difficulties. Here are the terminologies you need to be familiar with. To, to be familiar with. First is chemical bond. So the word chemical bond, it describes the type of force that holds two or more atoms together. So it is the attraction between the positive nucleus and their negative electron. That's how chemical bonds are created. Next, uh, we have here ionic bond. So ionic bond is a type of chemical bond that results from the transfer of one or more valence electron from one atom to another. Next is the intramolecular forces. Uh, these are the forces that holds atom together within a molecule. So these intermolecular forces are forces that exist between the molecule. Next, we have the covalent bond. So covalent bond is also a type of chemical bond wherein there is an electrical attraction between the nuclei and valence electron of an atom in which binds them together. Next is the metallic bond. So that is the last type of chemical bond that holds metals atom together. Next is electron negativity. Electron negativity is the measurement of a tendency of an atom to attract electrons toward itself. So the higher the electron negativity, the higher it attracts electron to itself. Next, we have the nonpolar covalent. So it is a type of full, uh, covalent that result when the bonded atom are equally shared electron. Next, we have polar covalent bond. That is a type of covalent bond that result when bonded atom do not equally share electron. So they are vice versa with nonpolar. Next, we have polarity. Polarity is the distribution of electrical charge over the atom joined by a bond. So there are possibility that some of the elements or atoms that bonded together uh, will produce a partially negative and partially positive uh, charges within the molecule. So that is what known as polarity. So let's discuss chemical bonding. So what really is chemical bonding? So chemical bonds are there is an atom or, or ions are held together in the molecules or compound by a chemical bond. So the type of number of elect electrons in the outer electron shell of the atom or ions are instrumental in how atoms react with each other to form a stable chemical bond. So when we say chemical bonding, all, only the valence electron or the outer electron participate in chemical bonding, not the inner electron. And we call them as the valence electron. So there are two different ways on how chemical bond ha happens. So it could be lose or gain electron, or they could share electron for, the, for them to become stable. So for this one, uh, this is an example of electron giving away its elect, uh, electron or negative charge for them to become stable. And while the other, uh, they accept or they gain electron for them to become stable as well. So this one is the shading of electron. So all of the elements, all of the mo a molecule that particip participate in chemical bonding, they need to become stable, just like what noble gases have, because they have the uh, eight valence electron, or known as the uh, octet rule. Okay, so atoms form bond to, uh, to obtain stable electron. So when we say stable electron, the outer shell consists of eight electrons. So some other 
have uh, exemption like helium. Okay, so helium is also considered a stable because it consists two electron. Okay, so that is the only capacity of the first shell to contain or to have, which is two electron. So here is an example of two fluorine. So uh, if we will count the number of valence electron of fluorine, it is seven. Okay, so we know fluorine needed one electron for them to become stable or eight to also have eight valence electron on its outer shell. So therefore, they will find other elect uh, elements or atom that have extra one electron for them to share. And possibly, it could be another fluorine because other fluorine, same with this fluorine, are also missing one electron. So they will share a electron for them to become stable and create a chemical bond. Okay? So bonds within molecules that hold the atom of a molecule together is what we know as intramolecular bonds. So they are strong as covalent bonds. So as we can see here, we have one carbon and four hydrogen. So the hydrogen consists of four valence electron and each hydrogen have one valence electron. So therefore, uh, they will share their electron for them to have a valence electron. So here are the valence electron periodic table. So we cannot uh, memorize all the numbers of valence electron. So therefore, here in our periodic table, we can easily find or identify their valence or number of valence electron by their column, okay? So for hydrogen and below, hydrogen, lithium, and so on, they are in column one. They consist of one valence electron. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium below is two column. They consist of two valence electron. Uh, of Column 3 to 12, so they have those number or they have a specific number of valence electron, 3 to 12. But here, if we are going to see boron, so we can see that boron is in number 13 uh, column, but it doesn't have 13. Boron, aluminum, and uh, other consists of three valence electron. Next, carbon. So carbon consists of four because it is in a 14th column. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and so on. Uh, that is, or that consists of five valence electron. Oxygen, sulfur, uh, and all uh, are below is the, consists of six, okay, valence electron. And fluorine, seven. Helium consists of two. And the neon, argon, krypton consists of eight valence electron. They are said to be the noble gases. Those H E N E A R K R X E R N O G are the noble gases. They have eight valence electron. They have this octet rule. Okay, so it is not uh, hard for us to identify uh, how many electrons does the element. Uh, needed to lose, to gain, or to share because of this position in the periodic table. So they show also how uh, how many numbers of valence electron they needed. So as we can see here, uh, also the electron negativity increases from left to right. Also from hydrogen to helium, electron negativity increases. So the elements here on the left side have the uh, chances to lose electron, have higher chances to lose electron, while on the right side of our periodic table, they have a chances or higher chances to accept electron. Okay, so that is what we call the electron negativity. So we here we have, uh, uh, we're going to discuss the three types of chemical bonds. Okay, so we have the covalent, ionic, and metallic bonds. So let's differentiate them. Uh, based on the elements that participated in the chemical bond. So here we have a periodic table, which is a color-coded between the metal, metalloids, and non-metal. So 
all of the elements that have a green tile is known as the metalloids. So this stairway structure in our or color coded tiles is the metalloid. They have the characteristic of metal and non metal. So they separate metals to non metal. Um, next is the blue tiled uh, blue tiled elements. They are known as to be metals, while the yellow on the right side is non metal, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is also non metal. So here, uh, by identifying the nature of the element that's been participated in chemical bonding, we can now easily identify what type of chemical bond happened. So if the metal bonded with another metal, we are dealing with met metallic bond. Okay? Non-metal bonded with another non-metal is known as to be covalent bond. And metallic or metal and non-metal element is known as to be ionic bond, okay? For example, we have nitrogen oxide. So we know nitrogen is non-metal, as same as with oxygen. So this is an example of covalent bond. So they will share electron. Next, uh, lithium fluoride. So lithium is metal. Fluoride is non-metal, so it is ionic band. Okay. Copper and nickel, those both element is not metallic, so therefore they are metallic band. Okay. So that is how easily we can identify the type of chemical band based on the nature of their elements. Okay. So let's discuss the three types of bond one by one. So first we have covalent bond. It is known as the sharing of electrons. Next, okay, uh, coordinate covalent band when an atom donates both electron in a co covalent bond, such as carbon monoxide, is a good example of shading of electrons. So as we can see here on our diagram, this carbon electron moves to make a pair with the other single, which is oxygen. It happens to be oxygen, wherein oxygen gives both of this electron since it has no more singles to share. So we have another example is two hydrogen. Uh, since number two is exceptions for the noble gases, two is considered stable. So hydrogen aim to have two valence electrons. That's why they share to another hydrogen. Next is chlorine. Chlorine consists of seven valence electrons. Therefore, chlorine will bond with another chlorine for them to share two electrons and then become octet rule, rule or follow the octet rule. Next is methane or CH4. CH4 consists of one carbon, four hydrogen. So carbon consists or have four valence electrons. So it needed another four. Instead, carbon will bond with four hydrogen and hydrogen only can donate one electron. So therefore it needed four. That's why they created a methane, which is CH4. So all of them are consist of eight valence electron and the hydrogen consists of two valence electron. Next is the water. So water is a covalent bond, okay? So oxygen consists of six, valence electrons so it means it needed two okay so this oxygen will bond with another uh, hydrogen for them to have a, a valence or balance stable or octet rule next we have uh, two types of polar covalent uh, two types of covalent bond we have nonpolar and polar covalent bond uh, first, let's define what is a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar covalent bond is a sharing of electron with equal numbers of electrons. So the both elements or atoms that participate in a chemical bond covalent is or, or have uh, equal share of electron, unlike the polar covalent bond. This time, 
there is an unequal shading of the electron. So this, this is where we can find the polarity because some molecules or some elements within the molecule become partially positive and partially negative charge. Okay. So next we have ionic bond. So this is a little meme or a joke. So two atoms talking together. The, the other atom said, I'm about to lose an electron. And then the second one, are you sure? And then he replied, I'm positive. Because every element that loses uh, electron, they become positive. While the one ele or while the elements that gained electron is become negative. Because ionic bond is the losing or gaining of the electron. Okay? So ionic bonding. First, metals react with non-metal. So the metal is the one who loses electron. Non-metal is the one who gains, okay? Because of their electron negativity. So while, while the metal loses electron, the non-metal gain. So therefore, the one who loses become positive, or the metals are the positive charges, while the non-metals are negative charges. So therefore, the attraction, uh, create a ionic bond. So here's an example of ionic bond, sodium and fluorine. So we know sodium consists of two, four, six, uh, no, uh, sodium consists of one valence electron, okay? So here, for the uh, sodium to release that excess one electron, it must lose, okay? So if the sodium loses the electron or the one valence electron, it will gain a positive charge, right? So what will happen to that uh, one electron? It will be accepted by other non-metal that needed one electron. And we have here fluorine. So fluorine consists of seven valence electrons, wherein they are matched together, right? Because fluorine needed only one valence electron for them or for it to become valent or for it to become stable. So once the fluorine accepts the negative charge, it will become or once the fluorine accepts the electron, it will become negatively charged. Okay. So how can we know the number of valence electron? We will just refer to the wait. Yeah, the valence electron periodic table. So here, sodium is in the first column, where, while fluorine is on the seventh column. So therefore, the, the sodium loses and the fluorine gained electron. Okay, so we have here uh, positive and negative charges. So any elements that loses electron become cation. They become net positive charge, so therefore more protons than electrons. So the number of protons is greater than electron. Uh, and we have an ion, so it gained net negative charges. Therefore, there are more electrons compared to protons. Okay. So next is the metallic. So like what I said earlier, metallic band is the a combination or bond between two metal elements. So the valence electron of metal atoms can be modeled as a sea of electron, as we show here. Okay, so this is the sea of electron. So therefore, the valence electron are mobile or and can drift freely from one part of the metal to another. So that is uh that is how the electron behave when two metal bonded together. So metallic band consists of the attraction between a free floating valence electron and a positively charged ion. So this occur between only same metal or different metal, okay? So this is the metallic band. Also, uh, we have here a summary, okay? For us to differentiate the three types of chemical bond, okay? Ionic, ionic is the transfer of electron from metals and non-metal atom, okay? Such as sodium chloride, okay? The sodium 
is the one who loses, so it is positive charge. Chloride is the one who accepts, so it is a negative charge. Next is the metallic bond. Metallic bond, their, their electrons be, are being shared but only on metals. Lastly is the covalent. Covalent, they, the electrons are being shared but the participants are non-metal. So for example, our uh, water and diamonds. Also, we can uh, compute their electron negativity. So for us to identify what type of chemical bond happened. So here, we are going to differentiate nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, and ionic bond based on their the difference of electron negativity value. So nonpolar covalent bonds form between atoms having equal or close electronegativity electron negativity value wherein the, their difference is less than 0 0.5. Next, we have here polar covalent bond forms between the atoms with electron negativity difference between 0 0.5 and 1.7. So any uh, electronegativity difference equal to 0 0.5 or between 0 0.5 and 1.7 is polar covalent. Next, we have the ionic band. So ionic band forms between the atoms with electronegativity greater than 1.7. Okay, so this is the electronegativity of the element. So we can easily identify their electronegativity because it is already stated in our periodic table okay so let's try this one okay so we will have an activity okay so for the following molecule use the table of electronegativity to calculate the electronegativity differences okay so here is our formula and electronegative differences, okay? So first, okay, so first we have nitrogen and oxygen, okay? So what is the electronegativity of nitrogen and oxygen? Let's consult the periodic table. So nitrogen is 3.04 while the oxygen is 3.44. So 3.44 minus 3.04 is equal to, okay, so we need to calculate that. Okay, we have here, okay, 0 0.4, okay, so 0 0.4 falls with Okay, so is it, is it nonpolar, polar, or ionic band? So 0 0.4 is less than 0 0.5. So therefore, it is nonpolar covalent. Okay, another. Okay, so let's try another example. Okay. We have here magnesium and oxygen, okay? So magnesium and oxygen. Mg 1.31 and oxygen is 3.44. So 3.44 minus 1.31. 1.31, okay? So let's compute. 3.44 minus 1.31 is equal to 2.13. So 2.13 is larger than 1.7. So it is a ionic bond. Okay. So next, let's have bromine and bromine. Okay. So let's find their atomic or electron negativity. So, bromine Okay, where is bromine? Okay, so here it is bromine 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96 2.96
2.96 minus 2.96, it is zero. So zero, what it is? It is polar covalent band. Next, last one. Last one, let's try the lithium and hydrogen. What is, uh, what are their electronegativity? Lithium is 0 0.98, while hydrogen is 2.20. Okay, so 2, 2.20 minus 0 0.98. 0 0.98. Okay, so let's compute. 2.20. 2.20 minus 0 0.98, that is 1.22. So is it nonpolar, polar, or ionic? So 1.22 is, uh, it doesn't fall from ionic bond because it's greater from 1.7. So therefore, it is polar covalent. So that is how we will compute the electron negativity differences. Okay, so I hope you get uh, the process and how we compute them because it is simple mathematics. So we will just uh, minus, okay? So class, please try the other items, okay? Okay, so that will be all. Thank you and goodbye.